What's going on guys, Arava here and welcome to some F1 2017 gameplay today. I'm going to be a little bit late to the party on this, I know, but I, you know, forgive me, I just flew in literally this morning from LA to the, back to the UK. I'm running on two hours of sleep right now that I got on the flight, so... You know, forgive me for being a little bit late to the party, but I had to bring you this video today because, well, it's F1 2017, it's F1 2017 gameplay, and we've actually got a bit of news now, further news we can talk about of the game. In Purely in this video, I'm going to be talking through what Lee Mather has said on the Square Enix stream, which is where he did a live stream with F1 2017 gameplay yesterday on YouTube and Twitch. The gameplay, the entire time, they're doing an interview, basically, so there's no kind of real audio. There will be a few little times within this video where I just stop talking just to show you the raw audio but as I said they're talking the entire time so you can just about hear the engine audio uh, underneath what they're saying but um, I'm going to talk through what Lee Mathers discussed and also there was a I would say leak almost like a little leak on Amazon on the Spanish Amazon site it, basically a tweet translating the Spanish blurb description of of the leak I guess you could say which gives us a little bit of kind of a uh, kind of focused insight into what they're hoping to release in terms of inf information right now I'm also in the process of getting a green light from Cody's to talk about my personal experience uh, of F1 2017, uh, you know, go a bit more in depth onto these career mode aspects. That will be in a video tomorrow because I need to kind of double check, triple check with Cody's that I'm good to talk about my experience. So for now, I'm just going to be discussing basically what anyone can find in the public domain and bringing you that news. So let's kick things off. So the entire time in the background, you'll be seeing that gameplay. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. And if you do, hit that like button. But basically from what Lee Mather was talking about on the stream. So the first kind of thing was, again, confirming that classics obviously is going to be a uh, big part of career mode as well. There's going to be invitationals and he described it as a, a Goodwood revival sort of feel. You know, you're going to be invited by these uh, by this rich character in the game, basically like an imaginary rich guy that's going to ask you to kind of take part in these events and you, that's how you're going to drive the classic cars within the career mode. Obviously, the Ferrari cars were announced uh, yeah, a few, couple of days ago, the classic Ferrari cars, the 2002 Ferrari, 2004 Ferrari and the 2007 Ferrari uh, and the 1995 Ferrari. So four Ferraris were announced a few days ago so if you didn't know that there you go so those four have been added to the list so overall that's going to be 12 classic cars remember with five different teams of the classic cars featuring in the game uh, we've also got a tweet from the Formula 1 game confirming actually a little tidbit of uh, to do with multiplayer is that there will be an option to do a lobby on multiplayer where you can just choose one classic car so uh, that's going to be a big deal because that means purely if you were to choose one classic car for everyone to drive you will literally get as close as you can to equal cars. Because we all know, even though you choose equal cars, currently on F1 2016, there's a little bit of difference in the way they're handled to one another. They can achieve the same lap times, theoretically, but they handle a little bit differently. I think yeah, I think league racers will know that and say that and kind of back that up. That there, there is a little bit of a difference, even if it is equal cars. But truly now, because you can choose one classic car, that could technically be the, the ultimate equal car kind of lobby. And it could mean that you could definitely get away with... Like, like a full-blown classic F1 car league, basically, for multiplayer. So I'm sure uh, a few people will be interested in that. But getting back to the info from what Lee Mather was talking to, the presenter from Square Enix, uh, he mentioned a new game mode uh, that's going to involve classics. There's actually two uh, two new game modes that he's kind of shown so far in the gameplay, the first of which he said this would be available in career mode, but also as a separate game mode, which is absolutely great because this will mean that it brings in casual players that just want to experience a little bit of F1 and what it's all about. They can play these separate little more casual kind of you know relaxing game modes rather than the full-blown career mode they're not going to get too kind of daunted by having to sign up for a whole season which is great because that's how this F1 game is going to grow it's the only way it's going to grow is growing that kind of huge casual uh, fan base that all these other racing games have you see any other racing game they you know the accessibility is so so high it's so to have these kind of one-off kind of game modes where th uh, those people who are not necessarily going to sign up for a whole career mode season they can play those so one of them in involves a checkpoint challenge so you have to go around in the checkpoint so the gameplay at the moment you'll see is the RB6 actually and I'll actually pause for a second you're going to hear Lee and the, the presenter talking but you can just about hear the V8 sound and this is the car that I actually told you guys about in a you know a video in the past this is the one car that I was really excited about I'm so so looking forward to driving it because you know it's also for the fact that we had it in F1 2010 and now we can see it with the vastly improved handling model from 2010 to 2017 now you don't perform for those individual teams, then they can drop you as a driver. 
yeah, and you could end up looking for you know a driver with a, a lesser team, or you might look in and somebody might actually have, have quite liked how you're performing, and that's something that you know you can really pay more attention to in this year's game. So that was a little inkling. You could just about hear the audio of the RB6 in the background there, but let's move on now. So later on in the interview, Lee uh, mentions the expanded engineer and PR rooms now, so fleshing out the kind of uh, scenery and kind of uh, immersive, immersive experience in the career mode. So now there's separate buildings for the PR manager, so when you go in there uh, and talk about your contract and whatnot, if you're not meeting your objectives, you go to the PR lady's room, uh, and then for the R&D, which has been updated, you go to an engineer's room in the back of the garage, basically, and there's a new management aspect in terms of that, whereas teams will have now opinions of you, and that will kind of play into how you're doing. So, you know, based off what car you're in and how you do in that car, other teams will then kind of be like, oh, I'm liking what I'm seeing there, or they'll be like, no, nah, I'm not impressed. And I'm actually excited about that part, because that was actually something I specifically mentioned when we tested F1 2016 like a year ago, back in 2016 March, was I thought that they need to bring that back, because they sort of had that in 2010, all the way back, but they haven't had it since. So personally for me, I was really, really happy to see that actually make into the game, because that was one that I definitely wanted to see come back. So that was quite a, kind of like a, for a personal thing, it was great to see that in. Also more on the management, Lee then goes on to actually confirm now there will be management of the engine and gear box so he mentions different engine components they'll be to look at so not just one entire engine swap there'll be different components you have to look into to manage in the game in the career mode so just adding that extra layer of things you have to do keeping the player busy because that's exactly how you're going to keep the career mode going longer and longer is if there's actually stuff to do the entire time rather than just it's just the race just the race because if, if you just have just the race about 20 times eventually by the end of season one you're going to kind of get a little bit you know just bored of the same experience so you're going to have these things to actually you work on and it adds that extra layer of things to do in the race you know like we see in real life f1 drivers sometimes have to manage their car you know obviously the the main one that i'm going to bring up is the mclaren guys they constantly have to manage things like that um you know but even the mercedes guys will have issues you know sometimes with you know brakes or they have to you know look after certain parts you'll see maybe towards the beginning of the season you know there's always this constant talk of maybe you know protecting certain bits obviously with the harsh penalties we're seeing in real life that's a big aspect of f1 and they're trying to bring that into the game and give that player that aspect of okay these cars aren't bulletproof and i do have to actually take care of them the second challenge that Lee also then mentioned was a kind of game mode called kind of Pursuit basically and it's essentially you get put in a faster car these are classic cars once again you'll see it in, in, in the background in the gameplay so you're basically put in the fastest car out of the selection and this is going to be basically a kind of cat and mouse game you kind of chase after the slower cars and so you have to kind of be flat out on it to try and catch them out because they're kind of staggered and they'll kind of start way ahead of you so because you're in a faster car you're expected to push really hard and actually eventually catch them up so kind of once again a really awesome casual game mode and definitely actually one that i'll be interested in just playing on because it sounds a lot of fun just kind of push flat out in like you know the f1 to that the f2004 and just go flat out trying to catch these older ferrari cars and also you'll you'll notice in the gameplay as well at bahrain it's a shorter track layout which is something we already knew from the previous reveal but finally now you guys can actually see some gameplay of the shorter layout so they have shorter layouts of Bahrain I think one of them is Silverstone I believe I can't exactly remember the other two I think there were four in total but correct me if I'm wrong but um yeah you have now shorter layouts which can uh, be involved in these more casual game modes and I think also they'll get mixed up in the career mode in terms of when you get invited to the invitationals they'll most likely be using the short layouts for those invitationals because it kind of makes sense when you know you, you kind of hear of events like Goodwood or just any kind of classic events in real life. Generally, they use kind of shorter layout of the circuits because it's kind of a closer knit sort of event. And then finally, and then finally from the interview as well, there was confirmation that the uh, the F1 2017 will be running on the PS4 Pro in 4K 60 FPS. No confirmation as of yet if it will do the same on the Xbox One X, which was of course basically Project Scorpio that was finally unveiled as the Xbox One X. No confirmation on that yet, but the PS4 Pro will be running at 4K 60 FPS, which is absolutely awesome to hear that they've got that optimized straight away already like the build they're playing obviously the gameplay is going to be 720p from the live stream but natively what they're playing um was 4k 60 fps on the ps4 pro which is absolutely awesome to think about you know that you know a couple of months out from the game being out and they're already at that stage in terms of having that stable running on on the ps4 pro so that's really great to hear and so finally what i'm going to do is kind of basically read out the blurb the kind of translation uh from spanish to english of the amazon kind of leak 
if you will, to kind of give us just a bit more pinpointing kind of marketing talk of F1 2017 to kind of pinpoint some stuff there. So from so from the blurb, there's quite a few lines where it's news that we already know, but there are a few little bits here and there that are, are new information that weren't really completely said on the live stream, which include uh, a brand new sprint, uh, a total of 20 modern and classic championship uh, with unique medals and unlocks. So further kind of off career mode game modes that players can play. Once again, you know, it's, it's a big commitment to actually sign up to a career mode. So sometimes, you know, may, you may just want to play through some fun kind of offbeat game mode. So that's going to be something that you can do now. And they'll actually be kind of unlocking stuff. So it's not just playing it for the sake of playing it, there's actually going to be some incentive to play it in terms of unlocks. And then expanded multiplayer, procession and reward system with comparisons player to player. So one, straight away, that's going to be so good to finally get a bit of comparison between each other with, you know, race stats, perhaps race wins, uh, a ranking system. I think that's what the procession basically means in terms of like a ranking system. They had that kind of back in 2012, if you remember, they had the 0 to 50. But it wasn't that, like, it was quite um, a novelty, basically, 0 to 50. It didn't really mean too much. Whereas now, if they kind of create a bit of a, you know, they've got, me they mentioned medals and unlocks. So they've got a bit more of a kind of tiering system, perhaps, or just, you know, it's something, it's something that looks a little bit fancier than just 0 to 50. And something that's kind of resembling maybe more towards the kind of FPS shooter style of ranking, like we've seen, like BF1 or Call of Duty or anything like that. You know, those games where, you know, players are, you know, including myself, you know, grinding out the game the entire year long because, you you want to get to that next prestige level or next level or next, you know, emblem or whatever, you know. So if you can unlock medals that you want to get or something like that, if you want to kind of get that reputation up online um, and you want to kind of have proof of how much you play the game in terms of, you know, if you've got like, uh, you know, if you're if you're playing the game week in, week out, it's kind of a reward of the fact that, okay, so when you get into an open lobby or something like that or you go into a league race, something like that, people will kind of see you as a more prestigious player because you've got those medals, those unlocks perhaps. Uh, we can see also a lobby a voting system up to 20 players so that'll be good in terms of voting for the different options I think maybe that will be in the lobby list of servers on all three platforms which is a big thing for the Xbox guys because that's something the Xbox guys did not have PS4 I believe had it since F1 2016 2015 uh, was from the PC but uh, Xbox hasn't had that so far they've had that hopper lobby system pretty much and so finally now the list of servers actual list of basically lobbies that are being made or are available right now to join or are in session will finally be available on all three platform so that's quite big for xbox guys because it was always quite annoying i'm assuming to kind of go through the hopper lobby system and then finally, obviously, you saw in the gameplay there, a little bit of new layout on the main menu, but that kind of just also some confirmation in some of the previous lines about the engine and gear mo uh, gearbox management and the reputation system. Just confirmation there once again from the leak as well, you know, kind of uh, with the kind of interview from the live stream. So that's pretty much all the info of F1 2017 in the public domain. As I said, tomorrow I'll be making a separate video, which will be basically going into my experience in depth, but I need to basically get a triple check from Cody's on basically if I'm stepping over the line or I'm good within my bounds of what I'm saying because there may be some things they still don't want me to talk about at this stage but if I can I want to go quite in depth into some of the career mode aspects you know that engine and gearbox management that reputation system the you know the additional R&D system that Lee mentioned in the live stream if I can kind of describe it in a lot more detail then I will try and do that in tomorrow's video but as I said I, I need to get the triple check just so I don't get in trouble with Codemasters so that will be tomorrow so if you're new around here, then do get subscribed for that. If you did enjoy this video, though, I would appreciate you hitting that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, once again, do get subscribed. I will see you guys next time. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next time.